Here is my hand, and with it, my whole uh, uh, Come on, this is outrageous! I'm inclined to agree. You think I'm going to stand for this? We've been working on this opening moment for 12 weeks. I'm uh, being paid to watch this ship sink. I haven't even worked my big monologue yet. Doesn't he understand the need to rehearse? I sing a song in this play. Well, it's not going to be very good unless we rehearse. I like to sing. <laughs> For those of us not in the opening moment, I feel like we are being denied the opportunity to express our voice. And what a lovely voice it is that I hold. <laughs> and as a woman in the world and in theater, I'm constantly being denied my artistic expression. Oh, and I am very good looking. Should the people have an opportunity to see that? Unprofessionalism displayed here is unprecedented. From the meager wages to the overcomplicated direction. I was the lead in a production of Hamlet, perhaps one of the most complicated plays ever written. And that direction wasn't clear this Byzantine. That's because this is a comedy. And being a comedy requires much more meticulousness than your precious Hamlet. Your brooding won't work here, Deploy. You needn't call me by my character's name. You're on stage. You're nothing if not in character. <laughs> you know, I saw you in that production of Hamlet. You weren't the lead. You played Polonius. <sighs> Those of us who pride ourselves in our knowledge of Shakespeare know that Hamlet is really about Polonius. <laughs> we are doing a comedy, people. Nothing is more important than that, especially in times like these. Times like these? My dear girl, surely you know we are in a great recession. <laughs> I knew it was a good one. <laughs> it's a great one. Joblessness is up. The stock market is down. Stock market? That only affects Wall Street, not Wilshire. Oh, but it has affected Wilshire, and it's climbed its way up Moreno Drive in the very heart of our community. Can't you see that? I can see Russia from my house. <laughs> I can see a dated reference. <laughs> we have problems right here in Beverly Hills. He's right. The space for our show has been reduced by 84%. I am outraged! We can't afford to build new props and costumes. It's an outrage! <laughs> We've been forced to share and use props and costumes from past shows and productions. My rage is out! <laughs> I think you're making much of you about nothing. No, I don't think we are. Oh, yeah? And why does it say so on the back of your jacket? Oh, that would be... <laughs> Alas, dear girl, why my big book of knowledge is also the Bible from Spamalot. My cane was the lance in Spamalot. My decapitated head is also being used in Spamalot. We are not doing Spamalot. <laughs> What's worse, I've cut salaries. I'm making half of what I used to make. Oh, you're making 50 cents on the dollar. Welcome to my world. And no one has even mentioned the problems with the electricity. What problems with the electricity? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. No problems with the electricity. Never to save money on the power bill, they started cutting off the electricity at random times. These are scary times, I tell you people. I can't think of anything more frightening. Hello. <laughs> I'll handle this. Brigella, we are so sorry. Easy. We know you're probably waiting to rehearse. You're singing not too close. We are unfortunately still working on the opening moment. She'll kill you! We are so grateful for your patience and absolutely apologize for any inconvenience this has caused you. Okie dokie. <laughs> That was a close one. All right, people, let's take it from the top. But we've hardly even touched the rest of the play. Uh, people can't even afford to buy groceries. You think we're going to actually have people in these seats? <laughs> there are people in the seats. I haven't even put my makeup on. House manager, come here, please. I told him not to open the house until we've got this opening moment just right. Why he couldn't understand these Maybe. simple directions. Maybe he doesn't take directions from someone who's not the director. <clears throat> The director of the show, as you may recall, abandoned us, left town with some actor. The porter? The actor playing the porter. <laughs> <laughs> the director and the porter were fired due to budget cuts. The least important jobs are always first to go. In any case, someone had to take charge. Oh, and like most men, you thought it should be you. <clears throat> 
The show is called The Servant of Two Masters. Who do you play? Beatrice. I play The Servant of Two Masters. <laughs> I think that puts me in charge. One could argue that we're all a servant of two masters. Servant to the things we want, servant to the things that keep us from getting what we want. Yeah. <laughs> so I should direct. I should direct. I should be on TV. Be a planet, <laughs> all of you. What is the matter with you people? You're fighting over who should direct. There are people in the audience. <laughs> the director's job is done. It's time to tell our story. How do we tell our story without lights that work properly, props and costumes to call our own, a director to direct the action, and an actor to play the porter? So many problems, where do we begin? We begin at the beginning. We focus on the opening moment, and the rest of the play will take care of itself. See, this is what I've been trying to tell you people. The show must go on, all of you, backstage. Now! Okay, baby, long. Okay, long. <laughs> um, don't eat them. Make sure you have all your props Ladies and gentlemen, the servant of two. Me. What? Cookies and cream. You guys just scared me just now <laughs> when you said what? <laughs> what do you want? I'm the new Giovanni. Who? Giovanni, the porter. Uh, your director, Chuckle Dino, hired me. Oh, yeah, the new porter. Excellent. Go back to with the others. We're about to begin. Go. <laughs> we now bring you the servant Excuse of two. Me. What? I'm the new Giovanni. Truffle Dino hired me. What? Am I not speaking English? <laughs> I already have a new Giovanni. I don't need a second one. Is it supposed to be that dark backstage? I'm afraid of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> There's glow tape on the floor. I'm afraid of glow tape too. <laughs> I have a contract that says I'm your new Giovanni. I'm the new Giovanni. I will destroy anyone who tells me they're the new Giovanni. Hello, I'm the new Giovanni. <laughs> <laughs> Although historically the portrait was played by an adolescent male, Trefaldino, nevertheless thought I'd be good for the part. And who do you play? Smaldino. Ah, the lady servant wants something more than to find the man. I already found two, thank you. <laughs> Here's the deal. We accidentally hired three actors for one role, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask two of you to leave. I'm not leaving. I have people in the audience. I have people in the audience, too. Huh. I'm afraid of people. <laughs> <laughs> we have one role and three actors. If someone can come up with a solution that's fair and simple, then let's hear the start of this show. Divided by 37. <laughs> Great! We can alternate entrances. As I recall from the script, the number of times the porter enters onto the stage is divisible by three. I propose we all take turns playing the one role, but simply alternate who enters. Great. Yes. I would suggest scenes, but the number of scenes the porter is in is a prime number, which we all know is not divisible by anything but itself in one. However, if we do it this way, we can do it mathematically, equitably, and favorable to all. Get it up for me. We now present the, the Servant of Two Masters. <laughs> Here is my hand, and with it, my whole. Come on, this is outrageous. Sorry, force of habit. <laughs> Here is my hand, and with it, my whole heart. Here is my hand, and with it, my whole heart. I shall take your heart and place it in my chest, next to my own. Oh, Silvio, you don't have a heart. I beg your pardon? You gave it to me, remember? Yes, well, I have your heart now. I hope so. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. When you gave me your hand, I put it in my chest next to mine. Then I took mine out and gave it to you, but what if it was my heart I took out? What if I simply re yours? Then you have your heart, and I have my heart, and then we never be together. I'm sense girl, so take his hand and you'll be betrothed. Oh, if only it were that simple. Pantalone is right. The joining of two hands is all that is required. Can you imagine? We join hands and suddenly we're engaged? And thus, with the joining of two hands, the joining of two families. By the way, 
My name is Smeraldina. How do you do? <laughs> That doesn't sound like Lattice. Witnesses are needed to validate the veracity of a betrothal. My dear servant, Smail Adina, can be a witness to our love. If I can't find a love of my own, then witnessing someone else is surely the next best thing. Elastic, I said Zipperine or Zippero. Witnesses, plural. Oh, Zippity. I won't be told I can't be with the woman I love just because we're short. One witness! <laughs> Never fear, I'm certain we can find one additional per person to certify this engagement. Perhaps I can be of some assistance. No! <laughs> That's an extra pair of eyes you need. I'm certain I have a pair you can use. There's probably a pair in her pocket. Do you think she's done the things they said? I think she's done much worse, I fear. Let's not let her know. We know. I can hear you over here. <laughs> We wouldn't know how to put you out, Regella. We're sure you're very busy. Nonsense. It'd be an honor to witness the joining of two hands, provided I can sit. Chair. 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 Thank you. My feet, you see. They're so sore. I've been cooking all day. Uh, ma'am, quite good. In any case, witnessing the poetry and romance of young love just reignites my own fiery passion. Please continue. Here is my hand. And here is mine. What's she? I agree. It's time you all betrothed. Well, thank you for your time, Regella. Good day. It didn't seem very romantic. Nevertheless, the engagement has been authenticated. Not very celebratory, either. We like to do things simple around here. I would have thought the engagement would be accompanied by a nice feast. A nice feast would be nice. I had planned on offering a light repast. Perhaps for the reception, then. I'd be honored to prepare a glorious meal in honor of the patrol. A glorious meal? That sounds glorious. That sounds a little too rich for our tastes. It'd be my gift, free of charge. Well, then, in that case, nothing's too good for, our, for my daughter, so... <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I am quite the chef. Well, then it's settled. We shall prepare us a glorious feast. Uh, <laughs> so sorry for being frightened by you earlier. Niente. I get that all the time. Giovanni! Regala! <laughs> uh, see. You called for me? <laughs> yes. Would you please bring us some champagne and some glasses in order that we might have a toast? Just, just don't hurt me. Okie dokie. Oh, and Giovanni! Yes? <laughs> uh, don't, don't bring the cheap stuff. Perhaps the uh, crystal. Of course. It will be my absolute pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pantalone, all the chips seem to be falling in place. Our children are in love, the engagement has been set. This marriage has surely been destined by heaven. Sure enough, Dottore. As you know, my daughter was previously engaged to marry Federigo Risponi of Torre. <laughs> Until his untimely death. And how did this Risponi come to expire? He was stabbed 17 times in the chest. Sounds like suicide. No, no, I'm pretty sure it was murder. <laughs> in any case, had it not been for that, my daughter would be with him and not with my new son-in-law, Silvio. A lucky turn of events for me. I would have only married that man from turn to obey my father, but my heart has always been yours. Well, it can be said, things always turn out the best for everyone. Not for Risponi. Well, no, not for Risponi. The exception always proves the rule. I was in Turin for three years. I knew him quite well. And his sister, Beatrice. Lovely girl. He was very, very protective of her. Pity about his death. Pity indeed. My financial arrangements with him were substantially better. He says pity. I say thank you. <laughs> I wonder if she plans on killing us all. <laughs> Giovanni with that champagne. Giovanni! Regala! <laughs> I, uh, I, I brought the Cristal just like you asked. Did you know that Cristal was first made in 
in seventy six for Alexander Staroy of Russia. Uh, no, no, I, I Giovanni. That's my appellation. Please do not impair or deteriorate it. Would you continue to use? I won't. <laughs> Is there anything else? <laughs> now, let me be the first to offer a toast to Silvio and Clarice. May nothing intermeddle with the bliss that is your love. <laughs> this is crystal. It tastes a bit like a... <laughs> Filet of fenestay with a hint of my new toe, a frog full of bat and ton of dog. Lizard's eye and howlet's wing, blind worm snake and wing of bat. <laughs> Double, dabble, toy and shovel, boy and bag and cauldron, baba! <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here? <laughs> I don't know, I do it. It's probably for me to 
explain it to you, mister. If you have business here, get on with it. If I had business here, then I wouldn't be a servant, now would I? Your servant? You don't act like one. <laughs> but I am, senor, perhaps the best servant in the world. And I mean no disrespect to any other, other noble men or women in my line of work who earn my respect by the mere virtue of their trade. Uh, I'm a servant. Ah, nuts. <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> I'd like you to be sure, but I was kind of hoping to marry you. <laughs> if you're a servant, where is your master? He is down by the docks. He sent me here to find a senior pantalone and announce his arrival. And be quick about it, he said. Which reminds me, which one of you is senior pantalone? I'm pantalone. <laughs> ah, my master has arrived. His name is Senor Federigo Rasponi. <laughs> <laughs> Federigo Rasponi? <laughs> <laughs> He's clearly a madman. Um, your master is dead. What? Y yes, Federico Rasponi is dead. That's impossible. I left him just a minute ago unless he's allergic to bees. And then came along a bee and then he was stung by that bee. He was stabbed 17 times in the chest. Oh, and then he fell on a knife. I'll be right back. <laughs> Could you imagine? I'd like not to. I'd only like to imagine nice things like daffodils and rainbows and unicorn and Silvio. If Rasponi were alive. He would be. The point is neat. There is no coming back once you have shuffled off this mortal coil, as Polonius says in Hamlet. Um, Hamlet says that. Well, Polonius should have said it. That was merely a typo on Shakespeare's part. <laughs> in any case, Federigo Rasponi is definitely... I am surprised at you to play such a cruel joke by saying my master is dead. That your, it was no joke. Your master is dead. I agree. Jokes are usually funny. Your master is dead. What's funny about that? <laughs> You're clearly missing a punchline. For example, a man walks into a bar carrying a duck under his arm. The barman says, hey, where'd you get that pig? It's not a pig, it's a duck. The barman replies, I was talking to the duck. <laughs> it's funny because there's a punchline. Your master is dead! No, that's not funny. <laughs> We should see this man he speaks of. Fregelli, you said you knew his phony. I did, and would be able to verify the validity of his claim. Perhaps we should see this man who is supposedly alive. Supposedly alive. Irregardless, let him fetch the man whom he purports to be among the living. Oh, I don't purport, because when you purport, you make an ass out of you and me. That's an assume. That's a fact, Mac. <laughs> This is outrageous! Calm down, my boy. I will not calm down, nor will I have my betrothal to the woman I love be threatened by- Threatened by nothing! You think for one second I think this servant is going to walk back and be with Federigo Rasponi? Ladies and gentlemen, Federigo Rasponi. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah, Signor Pantalone, the kindness I admired in your letters does not mirror your behavior in person. I sent up my survey to you get the message, but I've still been waiting outside for half an hour. Just hardly half an hour. Oh, I suppose you think I'm exaggerating. <coughs> like a woman? <laughs> no. No, I wasn't going to say that. In any case, I, I, I hope you don't mind me asking, but who are you? Did my servant not announce me clearly? Well, well he did, but I'm old and sometimes things can repeat. I'm Federigo Rasponi from Turin. Federigo Rasponi! <laughs> this is not Federigo, but his sister, Beatrice. I will hold my tongue until I find out the true meaning behind this deception. As you can see, my master is very much alive and well. And if you think this is some sort of apparition, I implore you to examine my master's chest. I beg your pardon? So they can feel your beating heart. Why did she go wait by the dock? Will we be having lunch soon? Soon enough. <laughs> Great. You really Just should check go! Alright. It is clear that you are quite in fact alive. But what we might need further evidence of is that you are in fact Federigo Rasponi. Is there anyone here who knows the need to be otherwise? For Gala, she'll notice me for sure. We were under the impression you were stabbed 17 times till dead. The stories of my death have been greatly overstated. I was stabbed 14 times till near death. But as you can see, I have made a full recovery. Still, your doubts are fair. Oh, Pantalone, 
Here are four letters from your correspondents, one of which is an administrator from our bank. You will recognize the signatures and see that I am indeed Federigo Rasponi. Very odd. <laughs> Very odd circumstances having to prove you're alive, wouldn't you say? Yes. Uh, is it possible I know you? You look familiar to me. Yes, and I know you. Don't you remember Brigella Caviccio? Oh, of course, Brigella. Please don't reveal me. I will explain later. I won't, provided your explanation is satisfactory. Mm. I looked over everything, and it appears these letters were meant to accompany Federigo Rasponi, but... Well, if you're... You still have doubts, Brigella? Can I test I am who I say I am? That's right. I can vouch for him. <laughs> well, then I rejoice with you, Federigo, and I'm sorry for doubting you earlier. Oh, no harm, no foul. Father, is this really Federigo Rasponi? Indeed it is. Then there must be some harm in foul. May I ask who this lovely woman is? Oh, this? This is my daughter, Clarice. Oh, the one who is destined to me in marriage. Oh, the very <laughs> same. This could get complicated. <laughs> this will not stand. This is the worst day of my life! I want to marry this horrid man! I wish Miguel had killed him! Your daughter has a great fire in her I greatly admire. That she does. It's too bad that fire burns for someone else. Ah, my boy, stand your ground. Who is this man? This is my nephew, Silvio. Your daughter is in love with her own cousin. Many people marry cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not her cousin, I'm her fiance. Albert Einstein and his wife Elsa Lowenthal were cousins. I thought she was promised to me. Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt were cousins. <laughs> we had believed the rumors of your death. My very own father would have married his cousin. But seeing as you are alive, my daughter's yours if you want her. Had he not fallen in love with his sister first. <laughs> <laughs> he is too late. You'd be well advised not to go back on our agreement. Anyone who wishes to take Clarice away from me will have to do so with this sword. Son, there is no sword. With the sword that will eventually be in my belt. That belt is more for a dagger than a sword. <laughs> with the dagger that will eventually be in my belt. There be are no swords or daggers. Budget cuts. <laughs> <laughs> or anyone who wishes to take Clarice away from me will have to do so with pen. Pen, pen. Who has my pen? Pen. pen. <laughs> with this pen. Ah, my boy, a pen is mightier than a sword. I think I've made my point. Bull point. <laughs> Show her off to you, I'm sure. And Silvio. Oh, I wouldn't be afraid of him. I suppose you think I'm easily frightened like a woman? Uh... <laughs> no! I wasn't going to say that. Ah, oh, no matter. He doesn't scare me. And as for your daughter, I hope to earn her grace. Now we can, find, we can settle our financial calculations. Oh, the dowry's ready, whatever you want it. How about right now? That was not a good time. The bank's closed. Yeah, it's a small advance. I didn't travel with much for fear of robbers. There are robbers here, too. I will take my chances. Okay, well, I send some money your way, but I don't know where you're staying. I hope to be staying at Brigella's Inn. If anything, you can entrust my servant. He is very trustworthy. Wonderful. Beatrice. I can explain. Better not be just a swindle to your pantalone out of some money. It is, but my intentions are honorable. What are your intentions? Well, as you've heard, my brother, Federigo, has been stabbed 17 times, and the authorities wrongly suspect the man I love, Florindo Artusi. <coughs> Why would they suspect him? Well, because he said he wanted to stab Federigo 17 times, and he <laughs> grabbed a knife and went to his house, and the next thing you know, Federigo is dead. Stabbed mm -hmm. 17 times? Yes. 
<coughs> and so the authorities suspect Florindo. They do, and they've arrested him. But Florin didn't do it, though he did have a motive. Motive. <laughs> yes, my brother was a very protective man and did not approve of my relationship with him. But, as you can see, I will risk all and disguise myself as my brother to earn the money to release Florindo. Your love sounds complex. It's not how I dreamed it would be. Love is hard. Hardly ever easy. But it's worth fighting for, wouldn't you agree? Will you tell no one my secret and tell no one who I actually am? Giovanni! Vanilla! <laughs> hmm. uh, please prepare a room for Signor Federigo Raspon. <laughs> Can't wait anymore. I'm starving for both food and attention, and my master's luggage satisfies neither. If he had at least packed a puppy in his lunch, then I wouldn't be so hungry. <laughs> oh, because puppies are good at finding food, they can smell it. <laughs> I bet some of you have some candy in your pockets right now. Like you. Do you have any food in your pockets? Well, if you don't have any food, do you have any money? Because, you know, money buys candy. God, I'm just so hungry. <laughs> it seems I'm always hungry. The truth is, I'm hungry for some meaning in my life. And until I find it, I will continue to fill this void with food, a temporary remedy to what seems a lifelong problem. So I must focus on the real problem, my source of misery, the lack of self-understanding that I have. If I don't focus on and solve that, I will surely self-destruct on the false placebo that is, well, the food that I fill myself with. It has to end now. What about a sandwich? Does anyone have a sandwich? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> hey! Oh. Yes? No eating in costume. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> yes. any of your business, but I packed only what I absolutely needed. Really? Hair gel, night cream, moisturizer, facial exfoliator, the essentials. That you find it heavy is, I'm sure, more a reflection of your own inadequacies, and not the weight of the actual trunk, which I'd really rather you did not drag. I'd really rather you stick a sock in your mouth, but you don't see me complaining. Uh, if this is any sign of the disrespect I'll be getting, perhaps I shan't stay at your master's inn. Oh no, the pretty girl shan't stay at my master's inn. Such Master. disrespect? <clears throat> you rogue? How dare you speak to a man above your station like that? I will speak to whomever I want, however I want, and I'll thank you to mind your own fritos! Senor, perhaps I can be of some assistance. To the of you, but that lovely girl brought a sandwich. Maybe I can muster one from this fellow. Yes, some assistance would be appreciated. This knave has been nothing but rude. I relieve you of your duty. You may go on your way. But you haven't paid me yet. <laughs> Nor do I intend to. Next time you learn some manners. You just opened up a world of yeah. trouble for yourself, mister. No, I'm scared. You'll probably <laughs> take a mess with Giovanni. Oh. <laughs> like I'd be afraid of that shrimp. <laughs> Here, let me get that for you. Uh, your shirt's <laughs> not too heavy? Uh, not too heavy for me. Uh. 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 Stay in here? Mm. No. Perhaps I'm inclined to stay elsewhere. Really? Yes, I heard there was another inn about a mile down the road. A mile? <laughs> not too far, not too far, not too far. <laughs> I would not say at that other end. They're twice as rude. No, this inn here, just ten steps away, is the nicest place for twenty miles. I don't mind traveling an extra twenty miles for a quality. Did I say twenty miles? I meant ever. This is the nicest inn ever. <laughs> Very well. Take my trunk inside. <laughs> That is if your shirt's not too heavy. Not too heavy for me. It was nice thing to have some mass. What did you pack in here? A bunch of sandwiches? Why would I have packed a bunch of sandwiches? I'm not going to the theater. <laughs> <laughs> it is done. Very good. What is your name? I am Truffaldino Batocchio from Bergamo. 
I am Florinto Aratusi of the Turin Aratusis. Are all the Turin Aratusis as handsome as you? Oh, Truffle Dino, I would think you are trying to flatter me if I didn't know every single word you are saying is absolutely true. <laughs> are you currently without a master? Currently? Yes. My master is currently not here, so it is technically not a lie. I like the punch in your Judy, Truffle Dino. How would you like to be my servant? Your servant? I don't know, man. I pay very well. Why, I wouldn't. Then it's agreed. Excellent. We should celebrate with a meal. Nope. Your first task is to go to the post and see if there are any letters for me. What about a light snack? No. Go to the post and see if there are any letters for Florinto Aratusi. I'll be waiting at the end. Where exactly will you be the dining hall? I'll be in my room. Well, I didn't get a sandwich, but I needed a job. My old master left and clearly wasn't coming back. <coughs> Truffledino! Oh, you're back. <laughs> Is this how you wait for me? You see me here waiting. But you shouldn't be waiting here. You should be at the dock. It's I only by accident that I saw you here. I had to walk to take my mind off my hunger. Oh, enough with your hunger. Go back to the dock and retrieve my trunk and bring it to Brigella's Inn while I'll be staying. You're staying here too? What do you mean, too? I mean you and Brigella. I'm Brigella. Brigella! <laughs> hmm. Actually, I'd, look, I'd like you to go to the post and see if there are any letters for me, Federico Rasponi, or my sister Beatrice Rasponi. As you see, due to an inconvenience, my sister could not accompany me on this trip, which, as you can see, she is not here. Consequently, some girlfriend may have written her here thinking that she was here, but she is in fact in home, in Turin, due to the inconvenience. Do you understand? I understand everything up until you said, uh, let me explain. Uh, no matter, I will go fetch your trunk and bring it back here, and I'll check the post to see if there are any letters for you or your sister Beatrice. Letters for Beatrice? I thought you left incognito. I only told my trustworthy servant who administrates my house. I didn't know which name he'd write to. If there are any letters for me, bring it back here at once. OK, where exactly will you be staying? Uh, the dining hall? Fantastic. I'll be in my room. Great! Great. There are some people who look for one master, and I've already found two. How do I get myself into these messes? I can't possibly serve them both. I'd have to be the best, the best servant in the world. <laughs> oh my god, holy macaroni! Maybe this is what I've been searching for, the meaning of my life. I keep saying I'm the best servant in the world, but I never had to prove it. I've never been tested. But if I could be the servant of two masters, I could truly hold my head up high and say without a doubt that I am the best servant in the world. But can I do it? Can I juggle so much? One second. This sharp knife represents one master. This second one represents the other. The two combined represent my work. This balloon filled with sulfuric acid represents my life because I think it's important to have a life-work balance. This salt shaker represents the Ebola virus. It's filled with Ebola virus and it represents the wife I wish to one day have. Oh. And lastly, these two cans of Coke represent the two children begotten from my wife that I wish to also one day have. Can I juggle it all? Here goes. One. Two, three! Oh God, I'm actually doing it! Oh my God, I'm amazing! I'm the leg over the shoulder! I'm actually doing it! I'm amazing! Finally, I found the meaning in my life! Oh God, then why am I still hungry? I found the meaning, haven't I? No, it's not enough to agree to be the servant of two masters. I must also succeed at being the servant of two masters. Then will these hunger pains go away? I'm sure of it. And would it be too bad to get twice the salary and double the food? I don't think so. Let's go to the post for both of them, for surely nothing can go wrong. You! Something's gone wrong. <laughs> Where is your master? Which master does he mean? My master. <clears throat> Perhaps I could trick him into telling me which master he wants. My master is in there. <laughs> Go inside and fetch him for me. I almost made it out of that one. <laughs> I will go inside and fetch my master. My master who is wearing the, uh... Clothes. 
<laughs> yes, go inside and get your master who is wearing the clothes. I will go inside. I had an aside. Oh, sorry. <laughs> He's a bit touched, isn't he? <laughs> I will go inside and fetch my master who is wearing the clothes of that specific color. Yes, go inside and get your master who is wearing the clothes whose color is specific. <laughs> is absolutely mad. I will go inside and fetch my master who's wearing the clothes with the specific color and the name of that color is... A reference to human perception of that actual color which is affected by wavelength of visible light. What difference does it make? Go inside and get your master now. I'll just send out the first one I see and be done with it. Federico Rasponi may have cheated death once, but not this time. Either he renounces any right over my Clarice, or he'll have to deal with me. <laughs> over there, with the pen. <laughs> I don't know the man. What could he possibly want from me? <laughs> I couldn't tell you. He was impossibly vague. <laughs> but whatever. I'm out to the post to see if there are any letters. I'll be right back. <laughs> Senor, you've asked for me? <laughs> no, I don't believe I have. Oh, but that servant who just left told me you were trying to provoke me, which, by the way, I would not recommend. <laughs> no, no. As you can see, I am very good looking. <laughs> I can't deny that. And good looking, <laughs> as I'm sure you know, are better at everything, including pen fights. I did not know that. But you did know I was good looking. Yes. <laughs> and as my quarrel is not with you, I'd be happy to leave it at that. Good, because truth be known, I'm not that good at a pen fight. <laughs> In any case, that servant clearly didn't understand me. I told him I wanted to speak to his master. I am his master. You are? That's right. He's at my service. Well, either your servant looks like someone else I saw this morning, or he's the servant of two masters. <laughs> 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 the servant of two masters. That is rich. Yes, well, in any case, forgive me for the misunderstanding. Oh, no, no, not at all. You agreed I was good looking, and that's all that matters. <laughs> and as they say where I'm from, a misunderstanding is nothing more than a failure to understand. <laughs> no, don't they say that everywhere? <laughs> yes. They're not very original where I'm from in Turin. Turin. You're from... Turin. <laughs> the man I was looking for is also from Turin. Well, perhaps I know him. And perhaps I can apply myself happily for your just satisfaction. Do you know one? Federico Raspone. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you need to face me when you say that line. Okay, okay guitarist, you got that? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know one? Federico Raspone. <laughs> Too well. He has designs on my intended. He is trying to steal my fiance. He did have a way of meddling with matters of the heart, but I would not worry about that now, you see. Federico Rasponi <laughs> is dead. Apparently, I was told. I, I was told wrong, as were you. Ha! Huh. I wasn't told. I saw firsthand. I saw firsthand him here this morning. Signor Pantalone, father of my love, carried out the most accurate investigations to make sure he was who he said he was. This is impossible. My eyes have never deceived me before. Except for that one time at Martino's, but in that dress and those heels, anyone would have thought that sheep was a woman. I mean, it was clear as day. <laughs> in any case, if you see Rasponi, be sure to tell him I wish he was dead. If I see him. Good day. Good day. Is it possible that Rasponi is alive? I saw him lying on the ground covered in blood. He was stabbed 17 times. I'm telling you, it's my turn. <laughs> my answer, every third answer, Bob, it's my turn. Although
although I guess it's not inconceivable that the blade missed all of his vital organs, and if so, it wouldn't matter how many times he was stabbed. This is the sixth entrance, which is divisible by two. But the other girl skipped that and went twice in a row. If Rasponi is alive, then Luck is on his side. I think she's not a very nice person. If Luck is on his side, all I'm the sure worst. she has been for a brave attitude. All the worst for. I think she's upset because she didn't cast us Don Quixote. All the worst <laughs> for. <laughs> Don Quixote was her dream. Do you mind? We need to figure out who goes on stage next. Must you figure that out on stage? It's the dark backstage. I'm afraid of the dark. There's glow <laughs> tape. He's afraid of glow tape too. Oh! oh, where was I? Oh, yes. If Rasponi is alive, then Luck is on his side. And if Luck Holy is on his side, cut my head off and call me Anne Boleyn! Oh. Wait, wait, I gotta get this one across the phone. I'm gonna squeeze it. Truffolino, you're back. I am. What's heavy? <laughs> what? I heard you say, Fruity Pebbles, this is heavy. What's heavy? <laughs> Why? My master's letters heavy in content, I'm sure. Oh, well, you've been to the post. Excellent. Give the letters here. Of course. Oh, Cocoa Pops, I mixed up the letters of one master with that of the others. How will I give him his? I don't know how to read. Come on, give me my letters. As uh, I never thought not being able to read would be my downfall. Master, I must tell you, not all these letters are for you. You see, I ran into a friend of mine. We were both servants in Berhamo. And he told, I told him I was going to the post, and he said, he prayed me, please find a letter for my master. And there might be just one, but I'm not sure which one it is. Don't you know how to read? I used to, but I've since forgot. Nonsense. <laughs> it's like riding a bicycle. I don't know how to ride a bicycle. <laughs> that would explain it, then. Here, give me the letters. I'll take the ones that are mine and give you back the others. Oh, thank you. Patty. I don't know, bro. <laughs> What's this? A letter to Beatrice Rasponi. To Beatrice Rasponi in Venice. Have you found the letter of my master? My who is master? this comrade of yours <laughs> who gives you such a task? Just another servant. His name is, uh, Pasquale. Who is his master? I don't know. If he asked you to find his master's letters, he must have given you, oh, I don't know, his master's name. <laughs> He did. So what name did he say? I don't remember. <laughs> what? <laughs> and where is that paper? I threw it away! Why? Because <laughs> I don't know how to read. Where does your friend live? Uh, uh, I don't know. If you don't know, how will you know where to give him the letters then? He said he told me. What time? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> he said he'd, he'd write me a letter. He said we'd have to swear. But you don't know how to read. I'm not a bad ah! friend. Please, you want to send me the letter no, and I'll let you find no, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I want to open this letter. It, it's a federal crime. You mustn't. <laughs> this letter matters to me too much. It is addressed to the woman I love. I think I can open it without scruples. I absolutely forbid it. He opened it. <laughs> oh no, Florindo, I absolutely forbid it. Last time I checked, I was your master. <laughs> Illustrious mistress, I hope this letter finds you well. Opening someone's mail, that's tantamount to murdering someone's brother. As well as can be expected considering Florindo murdered your brother. I didn't see that coming. Or at least was accused of doing so. The town did not question your sudden need to leave the city. What did pique the town's interest, however, was when they learned you ran away dressed as a man. Consequently, I fear they will find you, and if they do, arrest you. Your faithful servant, Marco. He would open the letter of the woman he loves makes me want to report him to the authorities. I could kill someone. That he would want to kill the woman he loves brother makes me want to not do anything to upset him at all. No. I could kill myself, for though I don't understand exactly what I read, it seems painfully clear that she thinks I'm guilty of murdering her brother, and no doubt reviles me. What's also clear is that she's here in Venice, as I suspected. If only I could find her and explain myself. Ooh, go, Trapolino. Use all your diligence to find Pasquale, find out who his master is, and if his master be man or woman. Uh, give me the letter, I'll make sure to find him. Oh, there is the letter. 
I can't possibly give him this Just letter. Just tell him it was a simple misunderstanding. I hardly think I that shall wait you at the inn. Great. How am I supposed to give my master this? What am I to do? Oh, God. Maybe I could, oh, I could reseal the letter. Oh, what was the thing? Yes, he says, I remember once my sweet old grandmother sealed an open letter with chewed bread. But I don't think I have any chewed bread. It'd be kind of crazy. My last piece of bread. <laughs> Good enough for four pieces. It's a shame I can't eat it. I'm so hungry. No, I have to do this. Okay. <coughs> Here goes. Oh, God. No. That was great. Um, it was really dry. <laughs> I swallowed it. Oh God. Okay. Um. I could do this. Two more. How? Huh? Three more pieces? Yeah. Three more pieces. Mmm. 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 Oh! It went down again. Oh God. Mmm. Uh, my last two pieces. God. Nature is against this. Mmm. I gotta make this one count. Well, <laughs> Trumpledino, you're back. Did you go up to the post? I am. There was a letter for your sister Beatrice. Come on, give it here. <laughs> <laughs> this letter has been opened. What? Opened and resealed with bread. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how that. Don't goes lie out. to me. <laughs> Why I would never. Trumpledino, who? I opened the letter. You opened the letter? Yes, but I can explain. Along with your letter, there was a letter for me at the post, and I meant to open mine, but I imagined it meant to open it. Open yours. <laughs> Sorry, master. Can't you read? Of course I can read. If I couldn't read, why would I be receiving letters? Then why did you open my letter? I can read, but I can't see. <laughs> Colorblind. Colorblind. Yes, and as you can see, your letter is written in color. Along with mine. And when I opened, I meant to open mine. I am not so hard. It was a simple misunderstanding. <laughs> Why didn't you say that before? I'm not an unreasonable ogre. I can understand a simple misunderstanding. Uh, as they say where I'm from, a misunderstanding is just a failure to understand. Uh, don't they say that everywhere? Why don't you shut your mouth? Of course. <coughs> Did you retrieve my trunk? Yeah, it's just over there. Well, I'll have the porter bring it to my room. I'll run some errands, and after that, we'll eat. Well, on the bright side, when he comes back, we eat. I guess I should consider myself lucky. God, I don't think anything can go wrong at this point. I'm surely, God, this is the worst that can happen. It's not like someone's going to walk in. Coins. Someone has coins. Oh, God, Giovanni. You are so smart and handsome. Thank you. No problem. Can you help us something? Yes, could you go get those two coins I brought you earlier? No trouble at all. I think you got it. 
Well, on the bright side, he's going to get the trunks. Uh, I would have taught him a lesson, but you know how intellectually inferior he looked? I oh, think the yes, kind of this over is considerably more cumbersome than his appearance would suggest. Yes, indeed, perhaps. If it had an axle at the bottom, the weight could be distributed and the friction could be reduced. In the interim, if I applied a positive energy force, it would be a lot easier. Yes. You, servant, is your master in? Oh God, what do I say? One master's in, one master's not. Well, is he or isn't he? My master? Yes. Is? Yes. Very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> My master is very sexy. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, when you see him, could you give me this hundred coins? Will do. Luckily for me, both my masters are very sexy. And one of them's about to be a hundred coin richer. Oh God, tricks are for kids. I forgot to ask what the masters are talking about. How do I know? It's not like one of them's gonna walk in and say, Truffle Dino, I presented a letter of credit to a banker for a hundred coin. Did anyone happen to stop by? Truffle Dino, I presented a letter of credit to a banker for a hundred coin. Did anyone happen to stop by? It's not like he's gonna say then, Truffle Dino, I want you to keep this hundred coin because you are so dreamy. Truffle... <laughs> Truffle Dino, I want you to take a bath because you are so stinky. <laughs> <laughs> that cut deep. <laughs> yes, someone did happen to stop by and I'm almost certain this is yours. Almost certain? What did the man say? He said, give this to your master. Am I not your master? What doubt could you have? <sighs> None. Good. Now on to more important things. Did you find Pasquale? Finding Pasquale is my number one priority. Nothing is more important than that. I like chicken. Do you want to eat chicken, chicken? Yeah. Very well. If it gets you to find Pasquale any faster, we'll order you some chicken. Oh, it will, senor. You'll see how much faster I find things once I've eaten and napped. Woo! <laughs> I don't know how I play the guitar. <laughs> Federico Rusponi is here and wishes to speak with you. Lesson I learned. What lesson? To give up on love? 
Make someone for money. Stop it! No more! You'll hear what I have to say! I will not! Oh, yes, you will! Make someone for money, not love. This phone is got money to spare.
We'll see you do married. Goodbye. Tomorrow? Don't worry, it's not going to happen. But what will Silvio think? Whatever he thinks, he won't be thinking it for long. But in that short amount of time, he will hurt, and so will I. Take solace in the knowledge that after this is all done, you'll have a happy resolution. It seems to me that in this life, you either hurt or you hope. Very rarely do you appreciate anything. <laughs> right here and when I come back it better be filled. Good day. I said good day. Disturbing a lover as well, you may see. 
will come to learning my respect. You are a slave to Torre. I was just going to see you. Who are you now? Yes, I am afraid I have some news of the utmost importance and therefore cannot be interrupted. Uh! Pork chops and applesauce! He did so much! He did! I thought we'd agreed I was directing this play. It doesn't matter who's directing it. It's not a rehearsal! Triple Dino, you're interrupting the play! I have good reason. There's only one good reason to interrupt a play. Fire. Earthquake. A tsunami. Rainbows. <laughs> so there are four good reasons to interrupt a play. I mean, there's also global warming. Honey, <laughs> that's just a mixed by China. <laughs> <laughs> that's just fine. That's what it is. Join. Because we started with the wrong scene. The opening moment of Act Two is a scene between the Torre and Silvio. We have to cut that, remember? Cut the opening moment? We are doing a comedy, people, and what is comedy all about? Timing. Delivering. The rule of three. Five. Ah. Five? The rule of five. Ugh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Pain. <laughs> the rule of seven. Please. Comedy is about repetition. Repetition? Repetition. You're wearing a red shirt. You're wearing a red shirt. You're wearing a red shirt. You're stupid. <laughs> no, comedy is about the opening moment. We can have Silvio in the opening moment of Act 2 because Ecuador will say that not to act late every actor is entitled to a 15 minute break. We just had a 15 minute break. Not Silvio. We have to start the session. Why? Budget cuts. Some of the support staff was laid off, so we have to make concessions. We have to sell concessions or make concessions? We have to do both. God, this blasted recession is ruining this play. That's not the only thing ruining this play. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? You've overcomplicated the direction. You wasted our time on opening moments. You, you hired three porters. porters. You can quote me on this. You can never have enough porters. But one of the porters you hired isn't very nice. Do you have a problem with me? No, she thinks she can enter whatever scene she wants. She didn't get cast as Don Quixote. <laughs> it's not my fault she didn't get cast as Don Quixote. <laughs> you never take responsibility for anything. Just like a man. I took responsibility for directing this show. Just like a man. Mm. And your obsession with the insignificant details have left us little time to focus on what's really important. I haven't even found my character's walk yet. My character walks like lip gloss. <laughs> the point is, he cannot interrupt the show. But what no! The only time someone can interrupt the show now is if this parking uh, falls on someone's head or someone accidentally gets stabbed by a knife. Barring that, the show must go on. Listen, we're all a bit on edge. The economy's tanking, and it's taking us more our life in this theater concert. Our production more than most. Yeah, you don't see stuff like this happening in the Scottish play. Huh, you mean Brigadoon? No, the Scottish play. The wee red lungs. The Scottish play. Haggis, the musical. <laughs> the Scottish play. He means Macbeth. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, no, he didn't. That's right. Macbeth. No! <laughs> well, most thespians consider it bad luck to mention Macbeth. Oh, stop it. My name Holland's out of theater. I chalk up any misfortune surrounding the utterance of them names to mere coincidence. I don't believe Shakespeare used the spells of which is in this text, making that the curse of play? I hadn't heard that story. No, no, I subscribe to the alternate explanation that theater companies put on that oh. Oh. <laughs> This blockbuster to save their flagging fortune. We have flagging fortunes? Uh, however, as it being a tall order for any single company to reverse this long-running trend of poor business, the last place shown before a company shut down was oftentimes the best. So, oh. shutting down? I'm really freaking out here. No, no, this company will not fail. Not because of the play, anyways. We're doing a comedy, people, not everybody backstage. Because comedy, comedy isn't about financial woes. Comedy isn't about big opening moments. And comedy isn't about this financial piece of tripe that I call Macbeth. Yeah! No! Really, people? Yeah. <laughs> no one even thought to get me an M&M? Not first even an M? What happened? 
Which one, the, the Israeli girl? Yeah. With the hair? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, this is not over. This is so not over! Don't get me chilling. Oh, Senor Pantalone, my respect. Your slave, Vittore, I was just going to see you. Where are you now? Yes, I'm afraid I have some news of the utmost importance, and therefore cannot be interrupted. I have no intention of doing so. Very good. It is, of course, in regard to... My son, Silvio, and his impending marriage to your daughter, Clarice. You just interrupted me. <laughs> Did I? You said we weren't going to do that. I am anxious to hear this news. Go right ahead. Let me do it then. Go ahead. My daughter... Is in love with Silvio, I know this too. And despite the affront you've done against my household, the feeling is quite mutual. You just interrupted me again. Did I? Yeah, you did. Go right ahead, Patrick. The promise I had made... It's one you intended to keep the word of this phony guy made that agreement null and void. Dottore, you keep... Interrupting you. Yes, I agree. I do this when I'm nervous and about to news I'm not going to like. Well, I am afraid... You're going to honor the promise you made to Rosponi. I intend... To honor the promise you made to Rosponi. Even though... It'll cause a major rift between you and I. I... I'm sorry this is the way of things. And wish... Things have turned out differently. Yes. Is that all you have to say to me? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> well, I'd like to think you'd say you're sorry. I mean, if you weren't sure that Federico was dead, you shouldn't have made an agreement with my son. But as I see it, it's simply this. The rage which you have with Silvio is confirmed by the girl herself, whereas with Rosponi it is not. As they say in Latin, laca laca bow, laca laca bow. <laughs> Doesn't sound like Latin. Consent and not copulation makes one a husband. Uh, my daughter has given her consent. Girls cannot be sacrificial. What? My daughter has given her consent. She's even quite happy about it. In fact, they were even seen holding hands. You lied. <laughs> really? <laughs> you lying scum. <laughs> my Clarice would never betray my trust. Silvio, I told you to wait at home. You also told me Pantalone would do the right thing. I am doing the right thing. Right by your wallet, perhaps. The marriage is set. You leave me no choice. <gasps> Not this. Oh. <laughs> so, so you know. You dare show your head on me? This is not! <laughs> this is not just any pen. This is a trademark clip click. <laughs> With a ballpoint inkjet and one of these things. What? <laughs> I'm a man of honor who deserves greater respect than this. You are a vile coward who deserves to be trespassed from side to side. Aha! Oh, Silvio! Silvio's Aha! Silvio. Aha! Silvio. you vile coward? I am here to defend you. Respond. You're the one I wanted to fight to begin with. Ah, oh, then have at it. You think you're the only one who knows how to use a pen? <gasps> Sharpie! <laughs> I see we're playing for keeps. I underestimated you, Rasponi. Like you would a woman? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't going to say that. Then have at it then! Have at you! We will guard on three. Guard? Guard. It's on guard. Oh, on guard. I'm sorry. On guard! On guard! Very precise. We'll on the count of three. One, two, Pony, you fight well, but not well enough. Have at you! You? You're not Mr. Pony. Well, you can fool me, baby. You're thick in my face. Not with these pens. I swipe this from the Peters. We're not supposed to go into the Peters. You only swipe one. I only need. One. Did anyone swipe anything for me for the Peters? Yeah, I got this. <laughs> this is from the Music Man. This is not a weapon. Oh, it is the way they play it. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Will this touch this advert? Someone will surely end up dead. But if the lights are keep going out, it could be one of us. Oh. 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 Did I get the lights went on? I can't see a thing. Rasponi, is this you? My pantalone! Oh, sorry, <laughs> but Rasponi, this has to be you because I can feel your trombone. It's me, your father! <laughs> oh, that, that's disgusting. Oh, my, that's disgusting. 
Pony, is this you? Ah, that's the girl. Ugh. Then rush Pony by process of elimination. This must be you. Yeah. That's not Rasponi. That's the porter. You, you stabbed the porter. Is he even supposed to be in she, this scene? She, Sorry. She. Is she even supposed to be in this scene? Do you know what this means? That Chocoldino was right. You can never have enough porters. <laughs> it means we stop the play. You said when someone gets stabbed by a knife, we stop the play. I mean, she was stabbed by a sword. She was stabbed by a sword, not a knife. We move on. Yeah, you pour her, move on. I don't think she can move. Uh, oh, I think she's trying to move. Uh, I think she's trying to speak. I shall impersonate a man. I think she's trying to impersonate a man. Ooh, I love impressions. His name is Alonzo Quijano. I don't know him, do Clint Eastwood. Alonzo Quijano has much time to lose, yet all he reads fills him with indignation at men's murderous ways. He ponders the problem of how to make a better world, but his brains dry up. Finally, he lays down the melancholy burden of sanity and goes forth into the world to mount a crusade. No longer a Lanza <laughs> but a dauntless knight known as Don Quixote de la Mancha! <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> you really think she wanted to kill herself? Well, I think if I had her right in time, she would be dead. Unfaithful strumpet. Men, they get the seed planted inside their head that their women are unfaithful. They're so accustomed to planting seeds that they're no doubt planted it on themselves. And they let that seed grow into a weed to justify their cruelty, infidelity, and lack of trust. Who is being unfaithful? The woman or the man? Well, I say if all the unfaithful men carried a tree bench around every city would become a forest. You know, I find it ironic. The woman who so desperately wants to find a man so quick to lump all of them into this ugly generalization. Not all men are cruel and unfaithful. No? Then it must just be you. Oh! oh. Damn, Dan. <laughs> 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 Damn, Daniel is right. <laughs> Chicken, have you found Pasquale? I thought we agreed I'd find Pasquale after lunch. It's two in the afternoon. It's after lunch. In order for it to be after lunch, it kind of implies that there was, you know, lunch? I don't eat lunch. You don't eat lunch? No. As my servant, I think you'd know something like, I don't eat lunch. I apologize. I don't know why I wouldn't know that, other than it's the kind of information one tells another over a meal. Such as lunch. In any case, it's all neither here nor there. Just like my lunch. I'm off to the post to see if I might uncover something. Please, find Pasquale while I'm gone. But I haven't. Eat some lunch and then find Pasquale. Yes, senor. Take this hundred coin and put it in my trunk. And then find Pasquale. Well, at least I can eat some lunch. I better put this hundred coin away before my other master walks in and starts asking some questions. Rebeldino! Of course. I have some questions. Did Pantalona give you a purse with a hundred coin? As a matter of fact... Give it here. Is it for you? Is it for me? Did Pantalone not tell you to give it to your master? Did he say master? I thought he said... Pastor. <laughs> Do you even have a pastor? No, I don't even own any cows. That's why I was so confused. <laughs> You know what? I, I bet he said, give this to your master. Just give it here, Truffaldino. Is the innkeeper in? Yes, I believe she is. Tell her that Pantalone and I want to have lunch and to make a table as rich as possible. How many dishes do you command? Oh, Pantalone isn't too pretentious. Five or six dishes will do. We'll see how well served you'll be. Finally, an opportunity to truly show my worth. There's no greater responsibility for a servant than to make sure his master's meal preparations are just right. In this, I excel. The only problem is I'm gonna have to work with that potentially psychotic and incredibly scary Brigala! How may I help you, young man? Uh, my master and Signor Pantalone are having lunch. I've been charged with ordering their food and setting their tables. What kind of dishes do you have in mind? Something classy. What do you suggest? Hmm. For the first course, we'll start with a suppa de minestrone and move on to a calamari fritti and finish off with a nice frigando. Frigando what? No. <laughs> a deer, a female deer. That's a French dish. Oh, I dated a girl from Paris once. <laughs> Did she serve you frigando? No, but she was a French dish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first course sounds fine. What of the second? Uh, <laughs> For the second course, we'll have an insalata caprese, a taglia de manso, and a spotted dick. <laughs> I beg your pardon? An English dick. Oh, I've never dated a girl boy from England before. <laughs> girl boy. Okay. Tell me, uh, how will the dishes be set on the table? Ah, uh, the waiter will take care of the girl boy waiter. Will take care of. <laughs> no, 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 no. We can't leave it all up to the waiter. The setting is the most important part. I would have thought the food. The food can be spotted poop so long as the setting is right. I have never, ever served spotted poop. <laughs> Dino, we are ready for lunch. Ah, I shall prepare six dishes. 
Six dishes, that sounds expensive. Uh, lunch is on me. Then again, I didn't have breakfast. Have you a favorite dish? I do enjoy a good meatball. Then, meaty balls. <laughs> <laughs> if you would adjourn to the dining room, the waiter will serve you. A waiter is to serve them? No, that won't do. I am the servant. If anyone is to serve my master, it will be me. Plus, you were so angry with me earlier. I have to reestablish my worth. Soup's on! Oh, here comes a waiter now. But how will I get him to, 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 to let me serve? Um, you waiter! Baby NJ, you startled me. Gosh, now my heart is beating like a bunny. Suppose you might be willing to serve this soup for me. By gum, I did it. <laughs> I'd be happy to serve this for you. It's the least I can do for startling you. Don't blame yourself for that. I'm startled by most things. You see, I'm pataphobic. Oh, afraid of pans. <laughs> afraid of everything. So you are afraid of pans. Yes. <laughs> I'm afraid of pans and pots, boats and trains, spaghetti sauce things. When it comes to being afraid, I'm a pro. Why do you think? I'm afraid I don't know. Well, I'm afraid if I don't serve the soup at the minestrone soon, it will get cold. You need a ladle for that. You won't be able to serve that soup with that one. I'll be back. This is going quite well. I expect this to go quite smoothly. Smoothly. <laughs> I guess I should consider myself lucky that one master's at the post and never has lunch. Truffaldino, I'm back from the post, and I think I'll have lunch. Sometimes I think I invite this on myself. <laughs> you say you'll have lunch, you'll never have lunch. Not usually, it's true. Yet today I feel quite hungry. I'd like to be served right away. I'm afraid it'll take a while for the food to be ready. Here's the ladle. The soup is not ready to be served. Lucky for you, I had a feeling you might be hungry and I ordered this soup in advance. Yum. Well done, Truffolino. Though I don't think this soup will be enough. Alas, that's all I ordered. The calamari fritti, tricanto, instant di caprese, tagliata di manzo, meaty balls italiano, and spotted dick. Should be up Along with all those other things. Excellent. Serve them to me as they are ready. The soup I'll manage myself. This could get complicated. Truffolino, where is our soup? This could get very complicated. Giovanni, run out every dish as soon as it's ready. I'm afraid to run. Walk briskly. Ah! <laughs> Master? Truffaldino, where is our soup? Haven't you heard? Soup is always served last. Since when is the soup served last? Here in Venice, soup is always served last. I heard Regala say soup's on. Soup's on the fire because it's still cooking since it's always served last. If the soup is served last, what is served first? Um, the calamari fritti is ready. Why the calamari fritti? Fine, bring us the calamari fritti. Right away. I am here! <laughs> I'm done with the soup. Bring me the next dish. I'm afraid the next dish isn't ready yet. What dish is that? Calamari fritti. <laughs> I'm afraid the next dish after that calamari fritti isn't ready yet. Just bring me the calamari fritti. Of course. First, I better get the soup to my other master. Yeah. Here's your soup. The soup? I thought the soup was so glass. Ah, you seem so disappointed. I thought I'd get it to you first. What about the calamari fritti? That will be second. Truffolino, the calamari fritti. Who was calling you? From the waiter, telling me that the calamari was ready. He already told you it was ready. It's not a very good waiter. <laughs> what is taking you so long? Oh, you're so ah, there was a hair in the calamari. I was just um fishing just it out. Just give it here. Truffolino! Who's calling you? The waiter, telling me that the soup is ready. I've already had the soup. Not a very good waiter. <laughs> is that the waiter? That's a the different The chicken is ready. The bad waiter. Tabaldino! Sounds more like that. Enjoy your calamari. You next dish. <laughs> what was taking you so long? There was a hair in the calamari. I was just having the kitchen scrape it off. There's also a problem with the soup. What's really? There's only enough for one. Oh, that is an outrage. Hopefully the frickin' dough will be problem free. Better be, Truffaldino. If there is one more problem. I don't suppose this is a sign language for I really want to hug you. <laughs> Instrate caprice and tagliata di manzo. 
Intellect, like a pricey and tacky up of the man, so. You may take the calabash. <laughs> Was it good? I ate almost all of it. <gasps> Cocoa Puffs, why did I give this master both dishes? If I, I have nothing to give to that master, if I give that master this, I'm sure to get some of this. Sabaldino! Here I am. <laughs> we are done with the freaking dough. Ah, how are they eating so fast? We are ready for the next dish. Uh, I'm afraid the next dish isn't ready yet. What is that in your hand? Oh, look, it's ready. <laughs> Calamari free tea. Did they scrape off a fortune with the hair in it? Yes, they did. There's hardly any here. There's a lot of hair in it. <laughs> the remaining dishes. Oh, what have you there? Uh, what have you here? Meet the balls and spotted dick. <laughs> Meaty balls and spotted dick. You just give us the meaty balls. I don't care for spotted dick. I don't blame you. <laughs> Senior Pantalone, meaty ball. You know how much you love him. I don't want to go. Truffolino, where's my spotted dick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Excellent. I think I'll leave this in my room. Afterwards, I'll take a nap. That'll be all for now. Huzzah! Huzzah! Oh, I think I've earned a meal. Serve me enough for four people. He's definitely earned a meal. Too bad the kitchen's now closed. No! Why? Did everybody enjoy their food? Oh, hello, Brigella. What? What did you say? I said, hello, Brigella. You didn't scream in fright. Why didn't you scream in fright? I didn't I scream in fright. Generally quite scared. A coward, in fact. Most everybody calls me. Coward. Gutless. Cold true. Yet I didn't scream. <laughs> it must be you. I doubt that. <laughs> When people look at me, perhaps by happenstance, inexplicably, they always wet their pants. <laughs> How does that make me feel to know I strike such fear in anyone who comes near? From fright. <laughs> In fact, when simply coerced, I did much worse last night. <laughs> How does that make you to know I'm filled with fear when anyone is anywhere near me? But you make me feel less weird.
if you know what I mean. Oh. And I don't frequent his hands. I, I'm not the type of girl, uh-uh. Not by a long shot. Uh, welcome back, Smaldina. I'm Yuki. I mean, Ginger's part. Mrs. Smith. Well, Smaldina will be I'm here on business. Oh. Isn't it always business? Well, oh, it's oh, not always. Oh, my mistress sent me. She has given me a letter to deliver it to Patrick Rasponi. I believe Senor Rasponi just finished reading. Why don't you come in? I would do no such thing. Are you crazy? I mean, I don't want people to talk, especially since I'm here to see Rasponi. And, well, I'm the maid to his right after all. Well, I don't think it's appropriate for me to ask him to come out. He's still sitting in with Senor Pantaloni. He's with my master. Even worse, I'm definitely not going in, as if people already have this opinion of me, which I don't care for, that I am man hungry and will set up any Tom, Dick, or Harry. I could ask his servant to come out. The dark-haired one? Ah, his boxy! Yes, animals! Uh, I don't care to settle for anyone. I want to be in love, though all I know of love is what I see of others. Who wants me? Can't they see I'm busy? Hey. <laughs> I'm sorry to bother you, since you look so very busy. <laughs> and now I'm busy looking into your pretty eyes. If you think a line like that will work on me, you are mistakenly perfect. <laughs> mistaken. Perfectly mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you? Oh, uh, I think you've been this letter to deliver it to Patrick Rasponi. I will gladly abide, but first you must deliver a letter for me. From who? Ah, a gentleman. Tell me, do you know a certain man by the name of Truffle Dino by Tokyo? I'm not sure. Isn't he Truffle Dino by Tokyo? Mm -hmm. Is this some sort of game? <laughs> <laughs> the name doesn't quite ring a bell. Can you describe him? Hmm. He's a good-looking man, average height, uh, stocky, funny, speaks well. Oh yeah, I definitely don't know him. I think he might be flirting with me. He's in love with you. Ah, oh, he's definitely flirting with me. I don't know what to say. Well, say you love him back. Love him back? Are you mad? Oh, this is so romantic. <laughs> the way he speaks in third person, <laughs> just like Santa Claus. What can Santa get you for Christmas, little girl? Well, I want one of him, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can love him back. I mean, love is a strong word. I don't know. I love him back! <laughs> and if one wanted to marry you, what should he do? Marry me? I barely know you. I mean, I can't just go on. <laughs> he would need to seek out the permission of my master and my mistress. Then he will seek out the permission of your master and mistress and ask for your hand. All the better for me. I'll be back in a flash. Tell me, do you know what it says? What? The letter. Oh, no. Uh, but I'm curious to find out. Well, I just hate for the letter to put my master and possibly your master in a foul mood. It'll make them say no to my asking for your hand. Oh, I haven't thought of that. If I don't know what it says, I don't know that I should deliver it. Well, let's open it, but how would we sell it again? Oh, you leave that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was born. Open letters. <laughs> okay, okay, but can you read? <laughs> can I read? Can you? <laughs> All right, then I'll open it. Carefully, of course. Oh, God! Oh. <laughs> what did you do? If I, I, I open it. I can fix it. I can fix it. Um, There, it's open. You read, read it. Read it. Read it. You read it. Read it. Read it. I would love to read it, except your mistress's handwriting is hard for me to make out. Ah, oh, you'll have a better chance of it. Well, it's hard for me to make out, too. I think that's an M. An olive? Gimel? <laughs> what are you doing here? I was looking for you. What paper is that? What? The paper in your hand. This? Oh, we were just practicing our origami. Origami? You can do origami. Yes, I can do a... He can do a dinosaur! <laughs> I can do a dinosaur. You can do a dinosaur, show me! <laughs> it's really quite simple. First you gotta do that with the corner, and then this, and then you crumple it like so, and voila, a dinosaur. 
This is a dinosaur. Dinosaur egg. <laughs> this is my letter, you impertinent swine. You're always opening my letters. I, I, I have nothing to do with it. Were you the accomplice? I don't know anything. Who opened this letter? Not me. Me neither. Well, who brought it here? Truffaldino was bringing it to his master. Well, Smeraldino brought it to Truffaldino. Snitch? Stooly? Rat? Fink? Gossip, but I get my oh, hands on you. You've been that for years. If you could run faster than us now, play with I might be worried. <laughs> I'll show you how fast I can run. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, I think you need some help. Come on. <laughs> Poor Clarice, she's in despair over Silvio. I'll have to console myself. And while he's reading, I'll just quickly make my way out and hope he forgets about it. Trouble, Dino? Where do you think you're going? You think I forgot this ever happened? Um, I wouldn't presume. Really? Perhaps I should teach you a lesson then. What? What's oh. that? <laughs> lesson one. Ow! Don't open my letters. Oh, God. Ah! Two, don't open ah! my letters. Was that lesson, lesson three? one? has the, I've just been accused of murdering my lover's brother, look about him. And this guy clearly looks happy and in love. Cavolino! Oh no, my good looking master, I better put all this away. Um, this was, no, this has to be there. And, um, God, oh God, oh God, he's gonna come, he's gonna, 
I was calling you. Uh, you'd have to forgive me. My ears have been ringing ever since you beat me. Have you found Pasquale? You told me to air out your clothes. I also told you to find Pasquale. How am I to know which to do first? Nothing is more important than finding Pasquale. No matter what else I tell you to do, you must find Pasquale. I'll do it right away. Get me a jacket from my trunk. <coughs> After I find Pasquale? Crapaldino. I'm cold. Get me a jacket from my trunk and then find Pasquale. But you just said, is it me? <laughs> Here. Oh. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that? Um. <laughs> That's your portrait, senor. That's not my portrait. I packed no such portrait. Let me see it. <laughs> oh, God, I screwed up. I put the portrait back in the wrong trunk. Impossible. This is the portrait of myself I gave to my dear Beatrice. How did this portrait get into this trunk? <clears throat> I hate to lie, but I hate to be beaten even more. <laughs> <clears throat> Dear Master, forgive me. I hid it there so I wouldn't lose it. Where did you get it? I inherited it. <laughs> inherited? Yes. My former master. He died and left it to me. How long ago has it been since this master of yours died? About a week ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? Uh, I don't know. He lived incognito. Beatrice fled away in man's clothes. She lived incognito. Oh, heavens, please say this isn't so. So far, I'm doing all right. I haven't been beaten yet. Was your master young? Sure. <laughs> With no beard? No beard. And eyes of brown hair, of brown and lips that just melt when you kiss them? <sighs> Yup, that's him. It was her without a doubt. And I suppose if I asked you if your former master was from Turin, you would no doubt say yes. <laughs> no doubt. Oh. oh. And you're sure he's dead? Quite. And with that, I should be done. I want to see the body. Ah, smear! <laughs> there is no body to see, I'm afraid. Ah, uh, he died of the flesh-eating disease, and without flesh, you know it's hard to keep the body intact. Ah, and the oh. bones! Bones! Another servant uh, shipped it away and back to Venice. Was this the same servant who had you get the letters from the post this morning? Pasquale? <laughs> sure, that works. I, I, Beatrice is dead, to be sure. The torments in her heart and the pain of the child oh, probably killed her. No! I can't bear we it! We can't bear it! I can't bear it! I'm feeling it for you! I no! I thought that went well. <laughs> Clearly lying works. I don't see a downside to it. Of course, if I were smart, I would put these trunks away before my other comes in, my other master comes in. Of course, whenever I say I'm going to put something away before my other master comes in, my other master comes in. So this time, I will do nothing, and that should keep him at bay. <laughs> Jumbledino! Saw that one coming. You're back! Fetch me my notebook from my trunk. It has all my financial calculations in it. Ah, oh, Pantalone, I assure you there's been some accounting error, as you say there has. We can figure it out right now. Very precise, that's all. I want no less. Um, is this it? Should be. I have no other notebook in my trunk. This is not it. <laughs> oh, God, I did it again. <laughs> Impossible. This is a notebook I filled with letters to Florindo. How did you get this? I hate to lie, <laughs> but it worked so well the first time. <laughs> Dear Master, forgive me. I hid it there so I wouldn't lose it. Where did you get it? I inherited it. <laughs> you inherited? Yes. My former master in Venice died and left it to me. He died? How long ago? About 10 to 12 days ago. How can it be? I met you in Verona. Yes, I was on my way from Venice to Verona. Was his name Florindo? Florindo. Of the Artusi family? <laughs> Florindo Artusi. <laughs> Was he the most handsomest man you've ever seen with luscious hair and glistening muscles? His name was Florindo Artusi. Surely that's enough. 
And you're sure he's dead? Quite. And with that, I'm done. Woo. I want to see the body. Um, a huge fierceness of wind blew him into a canal where he drowned and was never to be seen again. And then he got the flesh eating disease and died a second time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's supposed to hurt. Lorindo is dead. My holy oh. hope is dead. My soul is dead. Oh, how can I live when he was the only one I was living for? Oh, faint attempts. <laughs> I go through these dangers. I leave my country. I dress in male clothes. No. I cannot see the light anymore. My truth, I will follow you to the grave. <clears throat> he was a woman. You that too. Yeah. What a thing. <laughs> or lack thereof. <laughs> James, I am not the servant of two masters, but merely the servant of one master and one mistress. <laughs> Stop! Stay alone! I want to die! You know what you're doing! There's no sense in living. There's nothing you can do to stop me. <laughs> what do I see? Florido? Beatrice? You're not dead? You're alive? <laughs> Why would you ever think to kill yourself? I heard you were dead! I heard the same thing. <laughs> Falsely reported by my servants. Likewise by mine. I, this notebook was the cause. My notebook? How did it get into your hands? Or need I ask? This portrait was hidden among my things. <gasps> the portrait you gave me. Seems these rascals, our servants, are the cause of our grief. I think it's time we find out the truth. Senor Brigella. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> At your service. <laughs> <laughs> We need you to find our servants and bring them to us. Uh, I only know of one, but as soon as we find the other, we'll be sure to send him your love. I'll do that. Hey, thank you. I can't believe you almost killed yourself over me. I would do more than that. I would kill ten men. Forty-seven. <laughs> well, what happened? I went to Rasponi's house. There was a man there. He had a mechanical arm. I fought with that man. He was the one who killed your brother. You find the man, I told the police. You find this man. What happened next? They found the man. No. There's only one guy with a mechanical arm in all of it. So you aren't even on the run? I am free and clear. This whole time I was dressing like my brother to exonerate you. Silly girl. Perhaps the truth is, if I weren't a, if I weren't a girl, none of this would have happened. If I were a man, I wouldn't need Pantalone's money. I'd have money of my own. If I were a man, I wouldn't need my brother's permission to marry you. If I were a man... If you were a man, I wouldn't be nearly as attracted to you. <laughs> you are a precious gift of which there are many things I love. Not the least is your wrapping. Oh, look. Here comes one of our servants now. I suggest we not be too rigorous because you get more flies with honey. As you wish. Mm. This will surely be the worst beating yet. If only I had it live. Come on, don't be scared. Ah, we don't want to hurt you in any way. Now who's lying? <laughs> as soon as we find your other servant, we'll be sure to send him here. Yes, please, we need them both. <laughs> well, there's one good thing. We'll never find the other servant to beat him. Yeah. So. How did it happen that the notebook and the portrait were, were exchanged. exchanged? And why did you and the other rascal join forces to drive us both apart? I will reveal all. But first, I need to speak with you as I have an urgent yet sensitive male-related issue that I'm too embarrassed to discuss in front of mixed company. Man talk. I suppose if it's man talk. 
First of all, you should know that this is not men talk, and it is merely an excuse to let you know that the person behind your misery is none other than the servant of that lady. Is that Pasquale, then? None other. He's the one who mixed up everything. <laughs> I had nothing to do with any of it, but I have a hard time letting him take the blame because of his condition. Condition? Yes. He has what's referred to in the medical world as high anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I know. And him being my oldest friend, I would hate for anything to happen to him. So, you have to understand, I did it all for Pasquale. This must be a serious man talk if it's taking so long. So please, Master, don't uncover my friend. If anyone has to be beaten, beat me. But as long as Pasquale is okay, it will be fine. You love this Pasquale this much? As if he were myself. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put some cream on it and be done with it, please? <laughs> Excellent advice. I'll be right there. I'm going to tell the lady that it was me. She may yell, I may be beaten, but oh. as long as Pasquale is safe, <laughs> it will all be worth it. What's a loving man? <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Is everything okay? Yes, but first I must let you know that I do not have a male-related issue. Well then, what were you talking about with Florindo? Uh, you see, I'll tell you that, but first you should know that the person behind all your misery is none other than the servant of your love, Florindo. I pray Beatrice doesn't judge Truffaldino too harshly. He was only doing it out of love for Pasquale. <laughs> High anxiety! Yes, and as he's my oldest friend, I had to take it from him. Why would you take on so much? Well, you, surely you know what it feels like to do so much for the ones we love. Too well. My love. My love. Why suggest that our servant did nothing out of malice, that we forgive them of our transgressions? I was about to suggest the exact same thing, especially in light of our present happiness. Oh, wonderful. Then I'm off to Pantalones to tell him about this whole fiasco. Come on, Truffaldino. Ah, uh, uh, mistress, I would like to let you know that, you see, Mr. Florindo is without a servant, and would you let me serve for him, because you know how helpless men can be. Yes, wonderful idea, <laughs> serve him well. I love him more than I love myself. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Florindo, I offered to uh, serve for Lady Beatrice, but you know how independent women can be. Of course. <laughs> My love. My love. Will you be yes in your pantalones? Of course I will. Oh, Florindo, <laughs> what great sorrows I went through for you. <laughs> Mine were greater. <laughs> Not really. Yes, they were. <laughs> but that's all in the past now. Okay. Bye. okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Senor Florindo, I have a great favor to ask of you. What is that favor? The maid in Senor Pantalone's house. I'm in love with her. And would you mind saying a good word for me? Does she want you? Oh, she wants me. <laughs> then I will do as you say. But buyer beware. Love makes people do the strangest things. You don't say. <laughs> now that everyone is up to speed, perhaps we can all forgive and forget and put this all behind us. Well, Pantalone, I accept your apology. Oh, well, uh, I accept yours, the Torre. Mm -hmm. Now all that remains is Clarice. Dear Clarice, I'm down on my knees. Daughter, he's on his knees. You can't forgive a man when he's on his knees. A man's knees is Achilles' heel. Not his heel was his Achilles' heel. Only Achilles' heel was his Achilles' heel. For the man it was his knees. <laughs> In any case, Clarice, if I can forgive Silvio, surely you can. Smeraldina, talk to her. I'm not sure I should. Smeraldina, please. I was a fool. A fool let my passion turn anger. And your anger on the one you love. I did it, and I'm ashamed. I'm so sorry that I ever caused her such pain, but I can't help but beg you. She settled for me. Come, mistress. He deserves to be punished. But punish him with your words and not with your silence. Let it out, because once it's out, it can stay here, and you and Silvio can move on. That's all I ask. Cruel! Cool! 
<laughs> Ooh, that's a good sign. Oh, very good. I'm optimistic. <laughs> if I knew you wanted my blood in revenge for my cruelty, I'd give you that gladly, but rather than the blood flowing through my veins, please take the blood streaming down from my eyes. <gasps> <laughs> well, that was excellent. Beautiful. Wait, here comes another word. Cruel. <gasps> different cruel than the first cruel. Different cruel than the first cruel. Very different. Ungrateful. We're on a roll now. Inhuman. Very close. Dog. What a way I think. Rainbow. <laughs> no! Please. I love you so much. 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 Intrusion. I love you so much. <laughs> I am here to announce that the innkeeper is here and wishes to announce that Signora Beatrice is here and she wishes to announce that she wishes to come in. <laughs> Why does everyone feel the need to be announced? Doesn't anyone just enter anymore? Looky what we have here. Why weren't they announced? I thought they were dead. Nearly dead, fat man. I lost almost 20,000 Weight Watchers! <laughs> what do you want? We want the stage to end as mathematically ours. Yeah, we busted our hump for this role, and what do we get? I got a vast little skull fracture from a severe head trauma. Yeah, and I got stabbed, you meathead! So we want our due! The time that would have been ours had we not given up our role to this poltroon. Yeah, freaking coward. I thank you not to call me that. Bring it out! <laughs> 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 Most people are afraid of me, not him. He's shown me more love and affection than any of you. We've been nothing but affectionate towards you, Brigella. <laughs> <laughs> Have you? Well, old habits die hard, Brigella. Brigella, <laughs> stop that! But we've grown to love you through your gentle heart and your gentle soul and other things about you that are just so amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hans oh. Lone. Oh. I think everything's going to be okay. Oh, so give me a, give me a well, second. Get along. I, I can't stay without you. Oh, one of them. Oh, oh. Everything's going to be easy. These are good glasses. I love to have savings. I really do. Oh, yeah. 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 Just, just give me a second. Uh, uh, the thing is, this knife nice. doesn't come out what? of the when we last spoke? Are you asking if I still want to marry you? That's what I'm driving at, yeah. Well, I got in trouble because of you. Now you come here and ask me if I still want to marry you. Well, you got a lot of nerve. I like that in a man. <laughs> yes, I <clears throat> We'll talk. <clears throat> Mistress, yes, if I may beg a favor of you. Of course, well, as you know, I too, a poor young woman who's trying to find her place Ooh, in the world. Let's have a double Pardon my intrusion. I am Florindo Aratusi of the Turin Aratusi. Welcome, <laughs> Signor R2D2C. <laughs> Florindo Aratusi, not so hard. My respects to you and your guests, and that you are all here to witness my engagement, if Beatrice will have me. Florindo, here is my hand. Here is mine back. <laughs> Kiss me, Green, let's have a triple wedding. Triple, I only count two. Your Clarice is clearly clairvoyant. My servant would like your maid to be his bride. His servant? I don't think I know his servant. Senor Florindo, I believe you prevented me from suggesting my name marry Senor Beatrice's servant. But as you already asked for her hand, nothing more needs to be said. No, no. If I'm stepping all over your arrangement, I don't want to be doing that. Oh, I never have my arrangements come before yours. Oh, you're just being polite. But Disregard my request. No, if your servant is going to marry her, then mine won't either. Stop! Before any of this goes further and I end up without a wife, Smeraldina, give me your hand. 
Why should she give you her hand? Because I am the servant to both. <gasps> what? what? Ooh, I, I thought, thought your servant was Pasquale, Jinx. I can't help but feel slightly responsible for all that's transpired. Slightly? <laughs> Wait. You are the servant of two masters. <laughs> <laughs> Impressed? <laughs> no! Before we needed more, it's not true. 